This week on ANN News Kids, we'll be talking about the Taiwan train crash, the deepest shipwreck in the world and its exploration, coronavirus and vaccines, and the unblockage of the Suez Canal. The country of the week is Madagascar, which we'll be doing in French. And the extra fun segment is about ancient Olympics. For the Peer at Your Career segment, we will be interviewing Dilshad Bandhan, who is a wealth manager. Thank you. This week, once again, there was a horrible train accident, but this time it happened in Taiwan. At least 50 people died, including the train driver, after the train crashed into a lorry that was at the side of the trail. It was there because of construction and it might have fallen down onto the trail. The police are thinking of arresting the lorry's owner. The people who died and injured were mostly found in the first four carriages, which were damaged quite badly. The survivors actually broke the windows in order to reach the roof and escape. Taiwan has not seen such a bad train accident in years and they are debating on what to do about this. Submersible, which is a small boat designed to operate while completely submerged in water, first explored the world's deepest shipwreck on Wednesday. The world's deepest shipwreck is the USS Johnson, a US Navy World War II destroyer. This one is 6,500 meters deep and is found in the Philippines Sea. It was first discovered in 2019, but on Wednesday it was surveyed and filmed for the first time. Footage shows that it's not been damaged that much by the sea and the animals, but only in the World War II. It remains quite intact there are no human remains or clothing found. Many of the coronavirus vaccines are quite effective, but they don't last too long. We don't know how much time they give protection for. Pfizer said the Pfizer vaccine gives protection for at least six months, which is not a lot of time. Right now, in the world, there are about 131 million COVID-19 cases and about 3 million deaths. The new cases and deaths have been increasing, which is unfortunate because at the beginning of the year, they were decreasing. Right now, hospitals are getting out of hand and are completely full in many countries, like Brazil. They even ran out of oxygen and there are many deaths right now. Last week we talked about the Suez Canal blockage and this week there is some good news. The MV Evergiven came out. Tugboats attempted to pull it for so many days and finally on 29th March after five days it got free. It was stuck on the banks in mud and sand but luckily it wasn't damaged that bad. Although the cargo may be damaged or spoiled. Aujourd'hui, on va parler de Madagascar. Madagascar est un pays situé à l'est d'Afrique. Sa capitale est Antanarivo et sa population est de 21 millions d'habitants. Il est connu pour sa allée de baobab, un groupe de baobab spécial. Il est également connu pour ses plages, 
Ce forêt tropicale est sa flore et sa faune unique, comme les lémuriens et des caméléons. Ma Madagascar produit de la vanille, du sucre, du café et des crustacés. Vous connaissez peut-être le film qui s'appelle Madagascar ou des pingouins de Madagascar. Les deux films animés sont très proéminents des animaux. Merci. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Anya. Good morning, Nitya. How are you? Good. 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 Ready. We'll be talking about um, your career, and we'll be just asking you a few questions on it. So, could you start with introducing yourself? Well, my name is Dilshad Mandan, and. Uh, I am the and founder of Strategia Wealth Management. I set up my company five years ago after having spent 18 years at MCB. MCB is one of the largest banks in Mauritius. This is where I started my career by back in 1997 and I left in 2015 and I set up my further to that. I founded Strategia Wealth Management. And it's been five years nearly now since I've been operational. Wow. And can you explain your profession a little bit more in detail? Of course. It's okay. You must have heard about family offices, asset management, wealth management, high net worth individuals. So this is the zone where I operate and these are the people I work with. So what is it that we do? We are, as we call us, asset managers or wealth managers. We have three dimensions to our business. So uh, we can look after institutional clients. So that's uh, the, the pension funds, the insurance companies, the banks. You can also look after the assets of very high net worth individuals, rich people. So that's called wealth management. So what I do, I focus on the latter. So wealth management, I am not replacing a bank. I am complementary to a bank. So a client, he keeps his assets, his cash, his investments in a bank, and he can seek my services to manage the assets, to take investment decisions on the assets they hold. So the money is in a bank and I intervene either to take decisions on how to manage the assets or to give them advice on how to manage the assets. Or the other thing which is of utmost importance, what we do is sometimes we do not advise or we do not manage but what we do is we take the, the whole spectrum of assets of the client and we, we, we do a reporting, we advise the client how best to make his money work. Wow, that's a lot of things. <laughs> okay, so why yes. did you choose this profession? Okay, that's a very good question, Nitya. I never chose this profession as such because I was um, I studied financial services. So obviously, I knew that I wanted to work in finance, and uh, I joined a bank. And this is where I got the opportunity to learn about this aspect because we never stop learning in life. So when we, we when you work in a bank, you do many things. You can learn transactional banking, you can learn corporate banking, you can learn treasury banking, and many other aspects. One of them is wealth management. And you normally have a lot of exposure in the private banking segment of the banking sector into wealth management. So this is where I got the idea, I got the opportunity, this is where that bank I worked for gave me the opportunity and today I set up for myself. Wow, 
That's really nice. Wow. And what do you like most about your job? What I love most about my job, many things. I know I've got one minute to tell you, but what I like most about my job is the contact I have with people. I like to deal with people. And in my job, in my day-to-day, -day, if people are working with me, it means they trust me. And what I like best about this job is that you feel valued. When a client entrusts you with his asset, it means he trusts you. So uh, I like the customer contact. I like dealing with people. And the best, when a client comes to me, I like the feeling of being trusted. More than anything else. Wow, thank you. And uh, what advice do you have for kids? Mm. Okay, we always hear, uh, do what you like best in life. Try and study what you like best in life. So I still believe in it, but I am not 100%. Uh, I don't agree 100% that we should only do what we love best. Because sometimes we think we like something best. And very often it's by starting to do things we can pick up what's the best in that job. I'll give you an example. I studied finance because at that time, my parents encouraged me to study finance. But I don't like finance. I went to work in a bank. And when I worked in that bank, what I like best is dealing with people. So I did not necessarily like the finance bit of it, but I like meeting people. So in whatever job one would do, you have to find in that job, what is it that you like? You don't necessarily always have to make your living with, the, with what you think you like. So it's a bit controversial because we always say, do what you do with passion, learn, go and study what you love most, make a career of what you love most. But in real life, it's not that easy. Sometimes we need to take opportunities that come to us. And it's not necessarily what we like best. Yes. So, well, any other questions? Uh, no, that was a final one. Thank you for agreeing to do this interview. It was really nice of you. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for inviting me. Bye-bye. <laughs>
He thought they would contribute to world peace and international friendship. The Olympics were always held during the summer and the boiling sun. Sometimes the temperature was more than 50 degrees and it was dry. It was a dry, dusty, overcrowded, smelly, sandy and dirty. There are police who hit the people for no reason. Thank you. Olympic Games began in 776 BC when a cook won the 600 feet long stadium race. The Greeks loved sports and the Olympic Games were the most popular sport event. The Olympic Games had only one sport, the sprint. The, sport, the sports that were played in the Olympic Games were the pentathlon, which is a five event race. There's running, jumping, discus throwing, wrestling, boxing, pancreation, which is a violent wrestling match, and equestrian events. The Olympic Games were extremely popular and people from as far as Russia and Spain attended. They traveled by animals and carts. In the Olympic Games, many spectators would sell things as it was a huge fair. Half of the time was um, spent for worshipping Zeus and the other half was spent for the sporting events. Thank you. Thank you. 